50 meters of 10 millimeter armor cable. This is what we need to power the workshop so that we can power things like lights, sockets, heaters, and garden lighting as well. And once we've got all the cables in, we're gonna insulate the workshop and we're gonna use the world's most expensive tin foil and foam. Not only is this stuff really expensive, it's gonna be a pain to get this from the house to the workshop. So stick around and watch the pain and suffering. So the reason it's gonna take some effort is because we need to run the cable quite a long way. It's about 46 meters, something like that, from the consumer unit around the front of the house in the garage to the workshop. The consumer unit's gonna be on the other side of this wall at the back corner of the workshop. And we then need to run our cable all the way down here behind this old shed and all the way down the side of the house and then we're going to gland it off on this wall here so that it can go through to the consumer unit in the garage. So when you're taking your armour cable up to a shed, workshop, garden room, whatever it might be, you need to comply with the regulations. And if I'm honest, none of them are particularly fun. But choice number one, you can surface mount the cable. So I could mount it to this wall, to the fence posts, all the way to the workshop. And that's probably the quickest and easiest way, but it is unsightly. So I've gone for option number two. And option number two is to bury the cable. And that's the route that I'm gonna go down because it just looks better. But what we do need to make sure is that we either bury the cable deep enough in places where it's vulnerable to something like a spade or make sure it's protected by something like this concrete pathway here or the paving slabs that it's going to be run under. So I've dug from the workshop all the way down the side of the garden under where the new paving slabs are going to go. So I'm not too worried about that. The old paving slabs will go back over this until we put the new ones down. And if you were to lift those paving slabs up, you'd see the cable anyway. So I'm not too worried about the cable being fully protected until we get the new paving slabs down. Now I'm just cutting this little channel across here so that we can gland the armor cable off. So as long as the cable's either visible or protected, I'm not too worried about this being perfect for now. Right, so now our armor cable's in, what we're gonna do, we're gonna get on with first fixing all the electrics for the workshop. This is Sam, he's an electrician. He's gonna be helping me on this today. All we're gonna do is start drilling everything out first. Um, all the holes in the joists to run the cables for the down lights for the sun. I don't know if you can see this, but I've got some little bits of tape with crosses on them where I've marked out for the down lights for the soffits. We've got a laser set up so we know where these holes need to go for the cables. And we're using spade bits to drill 20 mil holes through each joist in the middle so that we can run the cables. When we're drilling these holes, we're doing them in the centers of the joists. Structurally, that maintains the strength of the joist and when we go and plasterboard this, we don't want any screws to hit the cable. So we want to be 50 mil or more away from the surface of the ceiling. Hang on, uh, are you in the camera? I don't know. <laughs> go on. Right, we're now drilling the holes up for all your switches, your sockets. This is the consumer unit here, so we'll drill the holes up. Yeah. Uh, and then we'll fish the cable so, down. So you're going through the top plates? Yeah, going through the top. Yeah. Okay, go on. Yeah. Through the top, into the ceiling, and down where yeah. the consumer unit is. Yeah, yeah I am. You are on it. <laughs> this is his first time on camera, give him a break. <laughs> <laughs> and because I was messing around talking, I forgot to put the microphone on, but you can see we're pulling the cables through all the joists and then we're clipping them in place. And once we've got the cables clipped to the joists, we're just gonna coil them up so that they're out the way for the plasterboarding. So I'm just putting the feed into the switch. Our consumer unit's going here. And I've gotta get a cable up through this top plate, through this hole, and then clip it all the way along this joist here to the switch. It's quite difficult because of how I finished the end joist on the top plate. Um, means that I've had to put a little draw wire in here. I did spend five minutes off camera fumbling around, I'll be honest, but I've got this wire in. And now you can see I'm taping my draw wire to my cable and then that will allow me to just pull that draw wire and pull my cable through. I've got a 70 mil hole saw now. I'm just drilling the holes for the down lights. We're putting quick wire down lights in so we'll be able to pull our cables in, put the quick wire connectors on and then I can plug the lights in a little bit later once we second fix. This composite cladding is actually really hard to drill through and it's messy. Wow, that is really messy. But you can see what I'm doing, getting the holes in, and then we can get these cables in. 
Whilst I've been uh, drilling the holes for the down lights in the soffits, Sam's been pulling the cables in for the double sockets around the room. Like I did with the lights, he's gone from the consumer unit with a 2.5 mil twin and earth up through the top plate, through the first joist, down to the first socket, then back up down to that corner over there, back up, down to this corner over here, and then down to the last double socket over here. So I've written here FCU for the heater, because I'm gonna put a heater on this wall here. So there'll be a fuse connection unit here, and we're gonna run a separate circuit, again, just back to the consumer unit for that. And then that really will be all the cables. Now, if you're wondering why we've put a ring in rather than a radial, it's really just for future expansion. Um, I think that just future proofs the building a little bit more. The only thing we really need to do now is put a bit of 10 mil in. So that's what we're doing now, a bit of 10 mil from where the consumer unit's gonna go down to the bottom of the wall plate ready to go through to the whisker box on the other side. So the last little job that I want to do before we move on to insulating the room is to fit my quick wire down lights and I've also got some nice black bezels with these and they're going to go really well with the black door, black fascias and the, the colour theme that I've gone with. So even though I can't use them yet because there's not even a consumer unit in until we second fix, at least it's going to look smart for now. So if you've been watching the channel for a while you'll know that quick wire down lights are pretty much the only down light that I use now and that's because of the quick wire connectors are so easy to use all I've got to do is wire this up and once I've wired all these up I can just go along and clip the down lights in they even put a mark on their wire strippers so that you can see exactly where you need to strip back you don't even have to put any earth sleeve in on the conductors you just pop live neutral and earth into the quick wire connector and it is quite literally very quick then I can just plug my down light in push the cable up through the hole and you can see you can install a down light in a matter of seconds. I don't even think that would take me a minute to install that down light. That's how quick they are. And there you go. How good does that look with the black bezels? So that's one of our five soffit down lights installed. You can see how quick they are. If you like the quick wire down lights or any of their other great products, hit the link in the description below and check out quick wire. So first fixing is done and we'll come back to the electrical stuff on a future episode when we do all the second fixing and all that kind of stuff. <sighs> The kids are already loading my workshop up with their toys. So what we're going to do now is move on to this massive pile of Actis Hybris insulation. And at a first glance, it really does look like the most expensive tin foil and foam in the world. This pile of insulation here cost me £900, but it's actually quite comparable to the cost of something like PIR, so Kingspan or Celatex, for example. But there's loads of benefits to using this Actis Hybris. This is not sponsored. This is just my opinion. Opinion. I've used this stuff in the past and it is incredible to use. It's ridiculously easy to install and it makes no mess because PIR is just a messy job. If you've used it before, you'll know what I mean. So this cuts down on all that mess and in my opinion, it's quicker to cut and use. So I'll install this Actus Hybris in the walls first and then I'm going to do the roof. We're going to do a cold roof. I'll explain a bit more about a cold roof when we get to the roof. So keep around for that bit because that bit's probably more interesting and more important than the walls. So this is the 90 mil Actus Hybris. Our studs are 400 centers, but between the studs, we've got 360 mil. And what we need to do is cut down the Actus Hybris to fit within the two studs. And we'll cut it about five mil too big so that it pushes into the space nicely and doesn't fall out. And if you've just joined us and you haven't seen how we built this workshop, make sure you go back and check out the previous episodes because then this will all make more sense. So to cut this, take a length for the Actus Hybris. It comes all coiled up, so it's really easy to work with. Measure the distance between the two studs, which we know is 360. So I wanna make that a tiny bit bigger, about five mil bigger. Put a mark on the Actus, and then you want one of these. This is like a bread knife for a jigsaw. I get these from Amazon. They are made by Bosch, and that's long enough to pass right through that bit of Actus Hybris. Let me show you. Make sure the Actus is all bunched up, because it's easier to cut that way, and then you'll just be able to pass that blade through the length. Now you grab these two little tabs at the end, and you pull the Actus into its final form. And all we do now, Pop that in between the two studs. But you want to leave about a 10, 15 mil gap from the finished surface where the plasterboard is going to go. That's for airflow. That's what Actus recommend that you do. And then you just want to pull it all the way to the top. 
make sure you're covering any gaps. And that is really all there is to install in this stuff. And in just a couple of hours, I had all the walls insulated. But now we need to insulate the roof. So for garden rooms, I prefer to go with a cold roof. Now what that means is there's a space between the top of the insulation and the roof deck above and that allows vapor to travel over the top of the insulation and that way you won't get any damp issues. I'm going to do one of my very artistic little drawings to show you what my ventilation system is and this will all tie into the earlier episodes where we double battened for ventilation. It'll all make a little bit more sense. So this will be the insulation in the ceiling with a gap above of 50 millimeters and when we double battened the walls for the cladding we left 50 millimeters for airflow behind the cladding. So at the bottom air can come up into the cavity it can travel up across the top of the insulation and that way it can ventilate our cold roof now you want a 50 mil airflow gap it's roughly 50 mil you don't have to be precise with this it's the same stuff we just used for the walls but being 105 mil that's going to leave us a few mil under 50 mil between the roof deck and the top of that insulation for airflow there's a few other things we need to consider when we're doing the actus hybris in the roof it's the cables, we need to just make sure we tuck the insulation around the cables, do the best you can, cables are always going to be in the way. What we don't want to do is end up pushing insulation above the cables because then we haven't got a cold roof. So we always want to try and make sure we go around the cable where we can. So it'll probably take me another couple of hours to do this roof because it's quite a big space. So let's get on with it, hit the music. My help has arrived again now. He's, I don't know where you've been, now all the work's done. Holiday, holiday. <laughs> We've got 26 sheets of 12 and a half mil square edge plasterboard. We do the ceiling first because then we can bring the walls up into the ceiling it's easier to cut it that way and it gives you a better finish all we need for this is this collated screw gun it's much easier than using an impact driver and a pocket full of screws so that'll make the job a lot quicker i appreciate that's quite a specialist tool if you're doing this at home of course you can use an impact driver and drywall screws make sure you get the coarse thread ones um, that's all you need really it's slower but if that's what you've got go with that before you go plasterboard in anything make sure that you write a plan of where your cables are because of course we first fixed all the cables and we need to know where the holes need to go once this is plastered so that we can cut the holes and pull them through and do the same for things like sockets and switches as well so we need to assemble our makeshift plasterboard lifter i'll show you that in a moment and then um, we'll get the first board up so this is our homemade plasterboard lifter another one of chris's masterpieces <laughs> we were plasterboarding this whole flat and um I think at the time we couldn't hire one or whatever so we made this and it was actually brilliant because it lifts up and down you can pump it up and down so you just put a bit of plasterboard on the top pump it up and the good thing is you can stand on it as well and screw it as you go so yeah that's done a lot of work that has um it's nothing fancy by any means but hey it's good First sheets up, we've got a laser line running down this joist here. So we're gonna work in this direction. So we'll square this edge up with this joist where the laser is, and then we're gonna stagger the joints. But we'll get this one up first. So what we've got is our first board on our laser line there. So we know it's nice and square, and then any cuts we can make along the walls. We'll get a bunch of screws in, probably about five across the width of the board. We've marked our joists and then we'll come back later and just put all our screws in. But for now, we'll just get the boards up. Mm -hmm. 
So the ceiling's plaster boarded. We are moving on to the walls now. We're gonna start with this back wall. This one's nice and easy because it's just the same height all the way along. The side walls, we've got a fall on them. If you watch the video where I built the building, you'll know that there's a 20 millimeter fall per meter. But we'll do this wall first because it's a nice, easy place to start. There's no other reason than that. Um, you can see, I'm there. <laughs> throwing tills at me. You can see that I've set my laser level up. Let me bring you in a little bit closer. And we'll fit our first board up to that laser level and we'll work our way in either direction. So we'll start here, we've measured the height. We are gonna sit it on a bit of plasterboard. That gives us a little gap at the bottom. There's absolutely no way you're gonna get any moisture coming up. But if anything's spilled in the room, we don't want it to track up the walls. So we sit it on this little packer and that just brings the plasterboard up a bit. So measure it, cut it, screw it. Now when you get your boards up, you won't be able to see where your uprights are to screw to. What you wanna do is just make a little mark where the each upright is, because then you're gonna know where you need to put your screws. So that one's up, now we just keep working in one direction. Hey Chris, how'd you get a footprint up there? It's easy, easy. <laughs> Now, if you saw previous episodes in the series, you'll know that there's a fall on this roof. Now, what that means is that when you're cutting your plasterboard, of course, this side of the piece of plasterboard is gonna be taller than this side of the piece of plasterboard. So if you can remember the fall, I know it's 20 mil per meter, then brilliant. If not, you'll need to take two measurements from the front of the board to the back of the board and you'll be able to tell how much you need to cut off the top of the board. Now all the boards are up, I can just run around and put the rest of the screws in and that shouldn't really take any time at all. So guys, a lot of you that are watching this series are not subscribed to the channel. So if you want to continue following the series, please subscribe to the channel because then you're not gonna miss any of the episodes and hit the like button because that helps the video reach more people on YouTube. So, plasterboard is done. As you know, this is a six meter by four meter room, so it's quite a lot of plasterboard, 25 sheets in the end, and a thousand drywall screws. What we're gonna do now is go around and put all our patris boxes in for the light switches, heater, and the uh, sockets. So we're gonna go around, do that. I'll show you how we mark them out and cut the holes so we can pull our cables through, because at the moment, all our cables are, of course, behind the plasterboard. The second fixing of the electrics, the consumer unit sockets, and all that kind of thing will be in the next episode, so you don't wanna miss that one. I hope to get that one to you very soon. Now, before I plasterboarded, I made note of where my sockets are gonna go. So I know this socket needs to be 500 mil from the corner, and the bottom of it wants to be 450 from the floor. Now I've got my box and a little level, and all I'm gonna do is I'll just draw around the box. Now I've got my multi-tool and I'm just gonna cut on those lines. Now there's a cable behind here, so what I do is just do this very carefully, just plunge through the plasterboard and you'll feel, it's kind of a feel thing, you can feel when you come through the other side of the plasterboard and you, at that point you just stop the blade because of course you don't want to damage the outer insulation of the cable. You can see the cables for our ringer behind there. Now all we do is just lift that up, pull them through, and there you go, no damage on them at all. Little knock out there, just pop that out. And we can just fit our box. Very easy to fit. Pop the little lugs in, and there you go. That's a box installed. I've just coiled the cable up, left that in the back of the box and that's ready to second fix onto. So I'm gonna put the holes in for the downlights now, and I took measurements from each wall so that I know exactly where the cables are for the downlights and where the holes need to go. So all I've gotta do now is measure from the walls, replicate those marks, and then I'll run a laser down the room so that I know exactly where to drill the holes. So I've got my line, and I know that my first downlight is 880 millimeters from that wall, and I've taken a measurement for each downlight as I work my way across the room. Now I'll just make a little mark on the ceiling so I know where to drill the hole. Now I've got a 70 mil hole saw and a dade. What the dade does is stops all the dust from coming back in your face because it's not very pleasant getting a face full of plasterboard. Now be mindful there's likely to be cables behind the plasterboard so go easy. And you can see that that catches all the dust. 
and now you'll be able to pull your cables through. So that's all the holes in for the downlights. And I've got 10 quick wide downlights, the same ones we used for the soffits on the outside, but this time with white bezels. And now I'm gonna wire my quick wire connectors onto my cables, I'll cut them short, I'll put the connectors on and I'll pop them up in the ceiling so that that makes it easier to plaster the ceiling and then we can just pop them down afterwards and plug the light in. And that is what you guys are going to see in the next episode. We're going to get this plastered, we're going to do the second fixing of the electrics and much, much more. If you guys have enjoyed this episode, click on one of these because you're bound to like them as well and I'll see you guys in the next one.